In this video, I want to build a new floppy music setup with you. This one, well, it's my old setup. Unfortunately, I didn't record any footage of a build back then. It was made in about a weekend many years ago, and the drives are still only held in with some adhesive backed velcro tape. The signal wires are just jumper cables, and the power distribution, well, it's a long and way too thin cable, causing problems all the time when being transported and the voltage drop on the end is quite significant as well, causing the drives to sometimes reset and I have to reconnect it all. Over the years some stuff was also being added, making the mess even worse, like these contact microphones, but overall it held up surprisingly well and survived a few make affairs and quite a few videos as well. But recently I was asked to provide a new floppy music setup and I knew my main one wouldn't survive being shipped anywhere, so I chose to build a new one that hopefully will not fall apart. While you will probably not see the new one again, I want to show you how I build it anyways, because I'm often asked how to build something like this, and this way I can also learn a bit in the process to maybe make my old one better or build something awesome in the future. So I would say let's get the old one out of the way and start making the new one. This is, well, it's just a very cheap and simple aluminum box was the only one I could find this quickly, but it's the perfect size to make a floppy music setup. It should house about 16 drives perfectly fine. And also on the other side, the plan is to use some wood, which will be held in something like this will be cut in the middle, so I will have two boards here and two boards here. And the drives, <coughs> I want to connect them like this with some uh, steel strips, with one hole being left uh, free in the middle, so the drives can be mounted on the boards like this. This unfortunately means that uh, the drives will contact the board with just the screws, but I think it might be even better this way, because um, this way it shouldn't rattle, it's screwed very tightly and pushed into the board, and um, it might even enhance the sound a bit. Instead of using <laughs> the old uh, very thin cables, this time I bought a few standard Molex adapters and um, floppy Y cables. Another new thing in this setup will be a new controller, which is an Arduino Due, like in the old one, but this time with some uh, shift registers, which can control the enable pins of the drives as well. This means the drive will be turned off when it's not playing a, load, a note. Um, this is not that important in the old setup, but it will be very important if you use not floppy drives, but some uh, normal stepper drivers with some external big motors. This way they are turned off and don't burn all the power all the time. For this I made two of these adapter boards. I wanted to make a custom PCB, but I just didn't have the time, so <laughs> I had to buy some standard perf board and shift registers locally, which was actually quite expensive, mm, but the only way I could get it done quickly. Now I would like to connect some of the drives together mechanically with this steel strip.
So we can now check and see if it fits. And as we see, it fits in perfectly. Maybe we are even able to uh, build some kind of hinge to flip it out and make it a bit easier to access the electronics underneath. So now let's take a look at how we could wire the power. This is one of these groups of floppy drives and we have two uh, split floppy connectors and one Molex adapter. And wired like this, we could connect each of the drive strips directly uh, to the source instead of having one long cable going around all the drives like I've had in my other setup. This should help with the resistance and it's also much easier to wire with these pre-made adapters than making my own cables. In order to mount the drives we need to cut the wood planks to length. So this is how I would like to mount the drives on the wood. In the middle you can see we have some holes in the steel strips where we can use screws from the top to mount to the board. But in order to not get it too floppy on the side, we will also add another one of these steel strips to the end drives like this and bend it over so it's held in place a bit better. So now I want to mount the drives to the wood. I have aligned them on the corner of the case. Uh, as you can see, we still have our gaps between the drives where we can put the screws through the steel plates. I first didn't want to do it like this. I would love to have them closer together. Um, one problem of doing it this way is also that you can't remove the single drives without unscrewing all of them because it's easier to do it with the hardware and this will be very stable. But the better way would have been to use a steel plate with holes, for example, which you can then flip up and um, unscrew a single drive instead of having all of them mounted like this. Also, in order to completely open up the back, I will remove this stopper of a rear hinge. As you can see, it prevents it from opening fully. For this, you normally just have to remove this. It's also the reason why I haven't used a very expensive one. But now you can open it up much further. The lower drives will be mounted about two floppy drives higher up, so there's some space underneath to put the electronics. And hopefully, I can also with this uh, hinge mechanism so that it can be tilted up a little bit and snapped into place with this holder here. Uh, this was a lot of work. The lower drives are now mounted as well. You can lift both of them up and you can even close it. It's not exactly finished yet. I need to also make the um, single wires and add a USB connector and power supply. But the mechanical stuff at least should be done for now. One week later. So right now I'm doing the final cabling of the uh, data lines. 
we will have, as I said, three wires for each drive this time. Um, and they will also all be labeled and then go down into the lower compartment where this controller will sit. Three hours later. Okay, so now I would like to open up all the covers. I have labeled them so I can put them back on again. It's very easy to take them off because I have bent um, the sides out a little bit. So this is how it looks like all opened up and let's do another test and see how it looks like. The same way like floppy drives you can also connect external stepper drivers with individual motors and even change the micro step settings. The shift register outputs are connected to the enable pin, so it's only active when a node plays. You can also lift up the drives carefully to access the electronics and a mess of wires underneath. The Arduino is connected to a nice Neutric USB-B terminal and the 5V regulator supplies the drives from an external power supply. This way you can even close the box and have the drives play inside. <laughs> 